This is a photo of Orion I took in November 2022. And this is a photo I took one month later. I got a new camera. I went from taking pictures like this of Andromeda to pictures like this. It's the same way that satellites shoot their photos in monochrome. And it made my view of the Andromeda galaxy even better. I take pictures of the stars with an Esprit 80ED. I use a monochrome camera and the ASI Air. I also use the Celestron 9 and a quarter to get close up shots of planets and galaxies. This is the setup I used for most of 2022 this mount and this scope. So the next thing to do is add a guide scope. This guide scope doesn't have an eyepiece on the back. My favorite guide scope, the one I used back then, I lent out to a friend. But we're just gonna play pretend here just so I can show you what I used to use. It's a great setup if you are the kind of person who likes to run and be on the go and just shoot and go for whatever all night, doesn't care. You don't have, you're not thinking about spending hours shooting a target. You just want to shoot for fun that night or if, or if you're just learning. Some people are really good at this, but it, it's difficult to find the object you want and center it unless you're really, really fast at finding those types of things. Like when I found the Rosette Nebula, I just could never center it again. I got it one time and couldn't center it anymore. This one has an extended dew shield. Well, first, you're gonna to need to get a T-ring adapter and then with that T-ring adapter, I got a corrector flattener adapter. So inside this box is the corrector for the SV503 scope. You have to order it separately. Sometimes you can get a kit that it comes with, but you get that and you get a, an adapter that you can put into a T-ring. Here is the corrector. That flattens your stars and it keeps them from curving at the edges. Also, it's a reducer. You take that with a T-ring adapter for your camera and you screw it on with the adapter that comes with the corrector. You always wanna point your DSLR down so that the sensor isn't exposed to dust coming from above. Then you plug that baby in and you're all safe now. Your sensor won't get clogged up. <laughs> you can see the sensor. And then, then you plug your DSLR right in the back of your scope and you tighten it down. And that's my old setup. That's the setup that got all the pictures for me before I switched to monochrome. Here's an image of the Pleiades using my old setup. And the Pleiades again with my current gear. She came to work downtown Okay, so this is the setup I use right now. This setup, I could break down. Let's start by taking off the dew heater. It's one of the first things I would probably take off, just because it would be easy to forget. I would take this computer off. Unplug all the cables from it. The next thing I would do is remove any other cords that are on the scope, on any of the stuff. That's all you have left right there is a scope. The autofocuser you have to actually install to the scope. I can't just pull this baby off. I've actually got to unscrew it and replace it with the knob that came with the scope on there. You pull the knob off and then you put this on and then you can autofocus while you're shooting. It'll focus for you. 
So sometimes it gets it wrong, but most of the time it gets it right. Next you remove the camera, and this is the camera. Here's the ASI 1600MM. It's a monochrome camera, and it has a cooling fan on it, so you can take long exposures without the sensor heating up. A lot of times you'll get a sensor that heats up, and it will cause a lot of noise in your photo. So this actually reduces that. It's kind of expensive, so I kind of I, when I first got it, I would have never held it like this, but I'm used to it now. The sensor shoots everything in black and white, and in order to get any color images, you use filters. When I'm finished shooting with the blue filter, I would saturate all the exposures in blue in post-processing. The best reason to get a monochrome camera is to shoot in narrow band. Here is the hydrogen alpha filter, which I'm currently using in the uh, filter drawer. The other ones are O3 and S2. I only use two inch filters because I didn't want to have to buy filters again if I ever needed two inch. The reason why I can get better shots of this is because I can control the color and reduce noise a lot. Also, I can reduce um, a lot of light pollution because it shoots in monochrome. I can use um, the narrow band filters, which cuts out a lot of the light pollution in town. That, and because I can take longer exposures without the sensor heating up, it just is a really, really well-rounded camera for what I need. Another great thing about it is because I can couple it with the ASI Air, it, it just centers things for me. So I don't have to spend a lot of time finding things and then centering them. I can just spend more time collecting data. I have the old ASI Air, and this ASI Air has an antenna that is not staying on. So I just tape it on. I'm not buying a new one just because of that little antenna thing. I ordered this computer in July of 2022. And just because of the learning curve with it and this camera, I was so worried about spending any good night wasting it with trying to get these things to work. I did waste a night just using this with the computer. I didn't have the ASI area. I used it with the computer and it didn't work out that great. Um, the data that I got wasn't the best, but it's really worth it to take one night of your astrophotography sessions and try to figure out how to use these two items together. And don't forget to get an autofocuser. This autofocuser saves a lot of time. Also, if it's really cold out, you don't have to spend a lot of the time outside. You can get everything set up and go run in your car or go inside of your house. A lot of times my son and I watch Jupiter from indoors. It's pretty cool. You have like a live feed of Jupiter. Step up there. See how it jiggles? Do it again and let go. Now step off the deck. See how it moved? Now put both feet up on the deck. Oh, I can't see it at all. Now jump off. Now look look at the screen. It moved, see? That's Jupiter. <laughs> Wait, Jupiter moved. Now press when I press jump? the stop button. Because we can't use that. You can't step up there. So this is what I'm getting right now. It was been super cloudy and I haven't shot for over 10 days. But I've got the blue filter in and we're getting the Andromeda Galaxy. So we'll go back to Epic. Yeah. So I have this cord too that I forgot to mention. You have to order one of these and it goes from the mount to the ASI Air so that they can communicate with each other. So you plug that in to the mount on this end and the other end into the ASI Air so they can communicate. 
so I can use that portable battery and power this whole mount all night long. It's pretty good. That means that the software is live. So the next thing you do, you need to make sure that it's connected to the ASI Air when you turn this on. There's actually a Wi-Fi setup you use inside. And so you're not using the internet anymore when you sign into the ASI Air software. And it looks like it needs to update. This has happened out in the middle of nowhere and I got really worried that my software wasn't gonna work because it wasn't connected to the internet, but it means it's already downloaded. And so this, uh, this is not a problem. If you see this happen with your software and you're in a remote area, you'll be fine. Okay, so the camera isn't plugged in, but I have the, this is the setting it comes up. You'll have all these different settings that you can choose from. And the one that worked with mine was the one that says EQ mod mount, and that's it. So you press that, and that's how you get into your software. Then you can choose what's going to happen, what you can look for that night. It'll show you. You can look around. I really like this feature. It makes it easier, but also I know how to search all these things because I learned the night sky in the last year or two. So I can look up whatever I want if I know the... Messier number or whether it's SH2 190 or any of that. I like the SH2 catalog. It's a pretty cool catalog. Next time, I'll show you how I process my images using free software. It helps me sharpen, properly stretch, balance, and mix color to improve my images. I'm not the best, but I'm driven by passion and I want to show you that you can do this too. I owe all of my thanks to the stars above and the Andromeda Galaxy.